Hey everybody, it's Chip Harris. Just wanted to get back with you. Uh, it is Wednesday, July 13th. And I wanted to get with you today, uh, new inflationary figures came out of the U.S. government. Uh, notably, I read an article or two. One was in the Wall Street Journal. The U.S. Labor Department indicated that um, U.S. inflation rose to 9.1% in June which is a uh, astounding figure and uh, inflation continues to rise and that gives me um, a great deal of confidence that the Federal Reserve this month in July of 2022 will raise interest rates again most likely by 75 basis points 0.75 basis points and so <clears throat> I still hold true to my bold prediction that I mentioned in the last uh, video that in my figure the inflation the inflationary pressures that the Federal Reserve is feeling right now which obviously looks at figures from not only just a month ago but really lagging indicators from several months ago um, will overreach they will continue to increase rates because they see this inflationary pressure occurring and they're going to continue to raise rates aggressively, again, I think, by 75 basis points in July, which is pretty much baked into the market. I think most folks and analysts and economists figure 75 basis points this month. I was assuming 50 basis points when they meet again in September. I may be wrong about that. I may be another 75 basis point increase in September. I may have been a little bit uh, dovish on that. So, um whether it's 50 basis points in September or 75 basis points, they're going to continue to increase rates. And my bold prediction in uh, the last video or two ago was that the Fed is going to overreach and they're going to continue to increase rates. They're going to grind our economy to a halt. We're going to go into a fairly significant recession for a short period of time. And I think that's all going to happen I think we're already in a recession, technically speaking, in my opinion. I know that we will be by the end of this year, in 2022, and we will be in a recession most likely all through 2023, and I think it will be deep enough to where by the end of 2023, the Fed is going to panic in the other direction. I think they're going to realize very quickly that they have overreached with their interest rates increasing and their tightening methodology. And I think by the end of 2023, going into the year 2024, they're going to start dropping rates like a rock in water. And I think they're gonna do that and they're gonna also increase their bond buying power and quantitative, quantitative easing uh, types of uh, 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 vehicles to majorly pump the economy back up because I think they're going to realize at the end of 2023 that they've got to dig us out of the recession they put us in. And so uh, some good news from an inflation perspective is what I have read is retailers have an abundance of inventory. They have an abundance. Their warehouses are full, which means most likely retailers like Target, maybe Walmart, but more likely Target, Belks, Macy's, Nordstrom's, you know, these major retailers are going to start discounting their products to move them out of their warehouses. They've got too much product. And so that's a good thing. That's a good thing because that, when they discount those prices to us, will lower the costs to those items. Now, foodstuffs from the grocery store, um, I don't see waning in price anytime soon. I think that... Um, we're going to continue to see higher food prices, which is unfortunate, uh, especially for folks of lower income uh, status. It's, it's just a very difficult time for those folks. Same with rents. Rents are going to continue to stay steady or even increase over the next year uh, because there's still a low, low inventory of rental properties for people to rent. And so when there's, as we've said and all the time, if there is a lot of demand and there's not a lot of supply, prices go up. Rent continues to go up. Same with the housing market. I know people have talked about, oh gosh, the housing market has really slowed down. Are prices dropping? Are our values dropping? 
I would say this, the housing market has slowed down. Interest rates, mortgage interest rates increasing has really grinded um, the mortgage business to a halt. You've heard of a lot of mortgage companies, including Loan Depot, who has uh, made a, a statement yesterday evening that they're going to be laying off 4,800 people from their mortgage um, company because people aren't refinancing their homes right now. You know, folks refinanced last year, year before, year before, year before, whenever, for two and a half, two percent, two and a half percent, three percent. And there's no reason to refinance now at five and a half percent. I mean, it's just, why would you do that? And so refinance business has dropped like a rock over 90 percent. Um, new home purchases are still occurring. And that's where the mortgage business has to hang its hat. That's where we as realtors have to hang our hat. There's still a high level of demand and there's still a very anemically low supply of houses available. So if you're a buyer, it is a better time right now because homes are sitting on the market a little bit longer. Homes are reducing prices a little more often than they were over the last two or three years. So uh, that's a positive thing for buyers. If you're a seller, again, it's supply and demand. You've got an item, a house, that is in low supply and there are still people looking to buy, buy, buy. So you're gonna be in good shape as a seller and you're getting in better shape as a buyer, which means the market's actually evening out a little bit. It's a healthier market. Um, we as real estate professionals see uh, a downtrend in contracts written or closed year over year from 2021 to now in 2022, which you know kind of gives you heart palpitations as a real estate professional. However, in reality, it's just kind of normalizing. We're getting out of the hyperactivity of the market last year and we're getting into a more normalized market and those increased rates are really helping that. Now, I will say this, first time home buyers, as I've told you in other videos before, really, really difficult time to buy still because the intro, the intro rate home, meaning in our market, $300,000 or less, is still kind of flying off the shelf, so to speak. I mean, those are the houses that are still going fairly quickly without price reductions, and that's the bread and butter of our market and for probably most markets in the United States that are in small to mid-size communities. And so first-time home buyers, still a little bit of a struggle there. Move down buyers, same thing, unless you're paying cash. Move down buyers who have a lot of equity in their homes, they sell, they've got cash, are king. They can still pay cash for a house and, and, and beat out, unfortunately, younger first-time home buyers who have to go out and get a loan. Um, that reality is not gonna change in the next six months, uh, but heads up, it will next year. The recession will continue to slow the housing market and it will continue to even the housing market out. One thing that I will not say is that home prices are going to decrease. I don't think home values are going to decrease, I should say. Home values will stay even or increase, even if it's at minute percentages like 2 or 3%. Um, home prices may drop because sellers are overreaching with their pricing. They think they still think it's 2021 and they can ask whatever they want for the house and it'll sell in 24 hours and that's not the case. They can't overprice. I can't, if you're a seller, I cannot emphasize the importance highly enough to price your home correctly. Listen to your realtor, your real estate professional, get the CMAs done, even get an appraisal of your home done, which will reflect the value based on comps sold over the last six months because you want to price it correctly. If you overprice it, it's going to sit there and you're going to have to reduce and reduce and reduce until finally it's at the right price and somebody comes in and buys it. So price your home correctly. If you're a seller, if you're a buyer, be patient, be patient. Homes will continue to come onto the market. It's just, again, our inventory is very low, but be patient because the right home, even if it's out of your price range right now, may reduce price enough to jump into your price range and uh, you can become a buyer. So inflationary pressure, number one, still there. 9.1% in June, still there, pretty high, it's just increased. 
that's going to cause rates to continue to go up short-term interest rates i think by 75 basis points in june 75 basis points in september at least probably 50 basis points in the meeting after that so we're going to see higher short-term interest rates continue to rise until next year when i think the fed's going to have to drop them like a rock and i'm talking about the end of next year 2023 and end of 2024 just keep an eye on it that's my prediction. Till next time, I'll see you later.